Ammonia has become a global commodity for the agriculture industry as 85% of its production goes to the development of fertilizers which allows food to be produced at a rate that is capable of sustaining the growing world population. However, the formation of ammonia has been conventionally accomplished since the 1900s by the Haber-Bosch process. This high volume operation releases one mega metric ton of carbon dioxide annually which causes concern as it has detrimental effects on the environment. In fact, industrial ammonia production accounts for about 1% of global greenhouse emissions every year. The process of manufacturing ammonia can be retrofitted, which would be paramount in the fight against global climate change. Consequently, the goal of our project is to drive a carbon dioxide-free Haber-Bosch process. We will now examine the Haber-Bosch process and propose alternatives to transform it into a more sustainable and greener operation. The well-established Haber-Bosch process is illustrated in the process flow diagram. Methane is a key input into the process as this fossil fuel is the main source of hydrogen. This operation also requires elevated temperatures that range from 400 through 500 degrees Celsius and high pressures ranging from 150 through 250 bar. An iron catalyst is also used to help lower the required operating temperature necessary for the direct reaction between hydrogen and nitrogen. As a result, these high temperatures and pressures are the primary contributors to the capital and operational expenditures of the outlined process. For our design proposal, we will be focused on retrofitting the hydrocarbon reforming step from methane as this is a direct source of carbon dioxide and what renders the process an environmental hazard. Our first design makes use of air and water as the initial feed streams. Here, water is electrolyzed into hydrogen and oxygen. These components enter a separator that extracts the necessary hydrogen input for the modified Haber-Bosch process, while the remaining oxygen is purged from the system. Meanwhile, the nitrogen is obtained through air separation by pressure swing adsorption PSA system. Electrolyzing water eliminates the need for methane as a reactant and in turn eliminates carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Since water is an abundant natural resource, it is an excellent source of hydrogen for the process. Furthermore, in addition to producing zero CO2 emissions, the process has been successfully scaled up and a growing market for green ammonia is being cultivated in low carbon energy markets. On the other hand, many scaled up green ammonia plants are powered by solar energy. Unfortunately, there is a low conversion efficiency of solar energy to power, which potentially increases our capital costs since more energy is required to reach the desired annual production rate. As part of the design, we also release oxygen through a purge stream back into the atmosphere to ensure the safety of the overall plant and nearby society. A paper published by the Royal Society of Chemistry proposed another alternative for ammonia synthesis from nitrogen and water using a lithium cycling electrification strategy. This method consists of three key steps that result in the desired product, ammonia. First, lithium hydroxide is hydrolyzed into lithium and hydroxide ions. The release of lithium introduces a strong reducing agent that reacts with the nitrogen separated from ambient air which ultimately results in the formation of lithium nitride. Lithium nitride is further capable of being hydrolyzed into ammonia, regenerating lithium hydroxide as a byproduct, which is recycled back into the system, keeping the overall process continuous. Unlike the Haber-Bosch process, lithium electrochemical synthesis can be performed at ambient pressures and moderate temperatures. This minimizes the energy input into the system, but a high electrical input is still required in order to reduce lithium. Nonetheless, this process has showed great promise as an initial current efficiency of 88.5% has been reported for lithium electrochemical synthesis. It is important to note that the efficiency was reported for a laboratory scale process, and there is still current research being conducted in an effort to scale up the operation to produce on a manufacturing scale. Also, since water is used to hydrolyze lithium nitride into ammonia, there is no direct need to extract or separate hydrogen as in water electrolysis. Hence, this also contributes to a minimization of energy. Ammonia demand has increased exponentially over the last few decades and continues to rise. 
to meet these demands and maximize profit while providing environmentally friendly solutions, we have to perform an input-output analysis for both designs. Both water electrolysis and electrochemical synthesis make use of water and air as inputs to the, re to the process. In the electrolysis process, some unreacted nitrogen leaves as an output since the characteristic Heber-Bosch reaction has a conversion of 98%. Furthermore, the water electrolysis process also releases water as a waste product, but we're not taking into account the cost of water waste treatment for our economic analysis. Both processes produce ammonia and oxygen as a byproduct, which is purged from each respective process. An input-output analysis of both processes are highlighted. We analyze both processes for a plant with the capacity to produce 67 million kilograms per year of ammonia. The break-even capital investment of the electrochemical synthesis process is $5 million greater than that of the water electrolysis process. The break-even TCI is calculated based on a projected 10% rate of investment and a 37% tax rate. The break-even TCI on both green ammonia production designs are $40 to $80 million more than the conventional Heber-Bosch process. Overall, having a modified Haber-Bosch process that incorporates either of the alternatives presented has a positive environmental impact. Through the reduction of the amount of CO2 released, the surrounding air quality can improve, allowing for the protection of human health and the sustainability of our world's climate. Nevertheless, the development of an ammonia plant has some social and safety impacts that need to be carefully considered in the design of the plant. Ammonia has a characteristic sharp, pungent smell. This renders it non-ideal for an ammonia plant to be built near residential areas, as this can cause severe complaints by nearby residents and even potentially lead to the shutting down of the plant. Furthermore, the final ammonia product is stored in storage tanks that can be easily transported. While ammonia itself is not readily flammable, its exposure to high heat can result in the explosion of liquid ammonia. As a result, severe precautions must be taken by engineers to ensure that there is a safe process implemented to transport ammonia and that the storage tanks provide a stable environment for ammonia under these conditions. Lastly, before ammonia is compressed into a liquid, its gaseous form is a strong irritant and can affect employee health if leaked from the process. Thus, employees should not only be equipped with the proper protective equipment such as respirators, but leak alarm detection systems should be implemented. We recommend the water electrolysis process over the electrochemical synthesis, mostly because pilot green ammonia plants using the water electrolysis process have already been successful on a larger scale in countries like Chile, New Zealand, and Australia. Furthermore, it has a lower break-even TCI than the electrochemical synthesis method. Despite the large break-even capital investment, the water electrolysis Haber-Bosch process has significant positive impact on the environment since it produces zero CO2 emissions and should be further investigated.